All right, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call this regular meeting of council uh, to order today, Tuesday, December 1st, 2020 at 4.02 p.m. We will begin with the adoption of our agenda, beginning with administration. Administration, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? None, thank you. Very good. Uh, council, any discussions, uh, additions, or changes? Seeing none then, I am looking for a motion. Councillor Nelson? I'll move that we adopt the regular council agenda for December 1st, 2020. Very good. Council, any discussion on that? Seeing none then, I will call that to question. All those in favor, please indicate. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. We will move on to our council minutes for adoption. Uh, we have a number there. So council, we are looking for uh, any discussion on those and or a motion to accept. Councillor Nelson. Like to move the council adopt the regular meeting of council minutes November 3rd, 2020, the standing committee of council minutes November 10th, 2020, the standing committee of council minutes November 17th, 2020, the special meeting of council minutes November 20th, 2020, special meeting of council minutes November 20th and 21st, 2020, and special meeting of council minutes November 21st, 2020. And thanks to administration for uh, kind of getting some stuff tidied up that uh, that was missed in the process. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Uh, Council, is there any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, then we will call that to question. All those in favor, please indicate. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. And that brings us to Citizens Minute with Council. And I do believe that we have a citizen with us this evening who will be speaking with Council. Uh, and I would like to welcome uh, Tracy Shepard. Tracy. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Tracy Shepard, and I am the president of the Hinton District Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here to advocate on behalf of businesses in Hinton. I would just like to apologize. I sent a letter, but I did forget to include our town manager, Ms. Olson. So I'm very sorry that I did not uh, include you in that. Uh, I'd like to begin by telling you that the uh, Chamber of Commerce does not support your proposed budget from November 20th and 21st. Um, I'll just go quickly and uh, reiterate our points that a 4% increase in the middle of a pandemic where Canada has consistently for 25 years posted an inflation rate of only 2% does not make sense. Uh, Literally every business right now is decreasing their operating budget, except for the town of Hinton. Um, the second point I'd like to make, uh, make is the disproportionate tax increase for businesses versus citizens. Again, we're in the middle of a pandemic and businesses are struggling and now we're going to hit them harder. We are already paying taxes as citizens, and now we're paying it again as a business. And businesses do not use more municipal resources than citizens. We're being taxed more because you can get away with it. We have a smaller voting base. And I'm tired of being told that it's okay because Hinton uh, has a less disproportionate tax base for businesses than other places. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make it fair and it doesn't make it right. My third point I would like to make is the transparency of council with this budget. In, on November 20th and 21st, this budget was proposed. And again, in the middle of a pandemic, when people are working longer, harder and reinventing their business every single day, you have given them 25 days 25 days to respond to this. This is the busiest season of the year, whether you're in retail or not. Stress levels are high. 
and everybody is struggling to keep it together when we have cases being diagnosed every single day. This in our minds is completely unacceptable. It feels like council is trying to pass something through that they're trying to hide. I'm not saying you're trying to do that. I'm saying that's what it feels like to the community. Even if you're just a citizen, 25 days to respond to this and do it knowledgeably is almost completely impossible. So I'd like to reiterate that we do not support this budget and I am open to questions or comments if you would like. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Uh, Council, any comments or questions for Ms. Shepard? Ms. Shepard, if, if, if I may, in place of the mayor this evening who unfortunately is away ill, so I'll pass on his regrets. Um, having been through the budget process a number of times since 2012, uh, I just want to reassure you that's, that's not the goal. There's certainly no attempt to jam through any particular kind of budget. Uh, I think really what we're looking at is the process, is that that's the next time it's slated to come before council. Council always has options. Uh, we certainly need to take our time, discuss with citizens. I know this week alone I've had at least two separate conversations with individual citizens with ideas for budget. And for myself, I'm always considering those. And that's what I'll continue to do moving forward. I have no desire to push through a budget uh, just to make a particular uh, deadline, certainly before the new year or anything like that. You know, as a town, we have flexibility with what we do. There are some complications if we delay or we pass an interim budget. Uh, but that being said, I, I think the most important thing is to get the budget that's right for the town, given our economic climate. And that's something that I'll continue to push for as we move forward. So, and then again, just, just to sort of extend that also a little bit further, uh, we rely on the input of members of the chamber individually in the chamber as a whole and other members of our community. And so, you know, we encourage that feedback. I don't think 25 days is any kind of specific deadline that we're looking for. We need the feedback that everybody in the community has to offer. So if, you know, if there's the desire to go deep with your counselors on this and say, look, I want to sit down and talk with you uh, on camera, you know, over Zoom or whatever we can do technologically to have that face to face, given the limitations we can and we should. So I would encourage you to reach out, get in touch with us again for myself. I'm very willing to sit down and discuss budget with anybody who wants to, especially speaking uh, on behalf of the chamber. Any of your members, please pass that on to them. I'd like their input before we move forward. So. Uh, Council, any further questions or comments for Ms. Shepard? No? All right. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. And again, uh, please feel free to reach out to us so that we can have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Council, moving on from Citizens Minute with Council to delegations and presentations. Uh, we do have a presentation this evening from the Hinton Grant Funding Advisory Committee uh, presented by Ms. Hersey. So I will turn it over to Ms. Hersey. Good evening. Hello there. So I think Fayaz is going to put up this presentation here. That's perfect. So this is the fall intake for the Grant Community Program. We had about $19,000 to allocate and six, I believe, uh, organizations looking for funding. Can you go to the next? Thank you. So the committee was made up of myself, a citizen at large, Shirley Caputo, a citizen at large, Jace Rush, I do not know what those letters stand for, Jalen Bertolin and Lila Underwood from the Youth Advisory Committee. So she was great to have on the council for sure. So I think most of you know what the community grant program is all about, but it's um, allocating funds to one-time projects, operating expenses during the developmental stages of events or organizations that are primarily designated for general public, attracts visitors and contributes to the local economy and provoke, uh, promotes volunteerism. So it's a great program and the funding generally comes from the um, photo radar. So 
our job on the council was to review and rank all of the submissions and discuss them, discuss the ranking criteria based on uh, the applications that we got and if they met the um, recommendations. And then basically we decided as a group what we thought would be the best based on the community as a whole's interests. And here I am presenting to you today. So we have uh, evaluation criteria that we're ranking these submissions on. So the first one is the needs assessment. So what do they need this money for and how will it kind of be, you know, uh, what will the KPIs just be to say is good use being made of the money? The cost benefit analysis, uh, the degree of financial uh, need and how much they're able to support the funding. They have to provide 50% of the funding or um, volunteer hours for the project. We wanted to see a demonstration of a thorough project plan. We want to know how many people will be impacted and how they will be impacted, as well as financial stability from the organization. So, you know, if they have a history that helps us make our decisions and the credible previous management of projects. So we had six organizations applying for money and they all had really great proposals and projects that all would be very valuable to our community. Like I said, we had only $19,000, so we didn't have enough money to give full funding to all of them, which we would have liked to do. But this is kind of the uh, breakdown that we decided upon as a group and are recommending to you. We understand that you might have information that we don't have, so we totally understand if you have different opinions than us. So we gave the boxing club the full amount of their request because it was for a specific piece of equipment and we felt that was very valuable given the type of activities that they're doing. It's a life-saving device. The Hinton Friendship Center, we recommend giving them half of their ask. Grand Yellowhead Public School Division, about half of their ask as well. And then from there, we kind of tried to give everyone something that was reasonable in comparison to their ask. We didn't want to leave anyone out, but we didn't have enough money to give everyone the full amount. So those are our recommendations. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. Great. Thanks, Jessica. Uh, I see Councillor Haas is in queue. Councillor? Yeah, thank you. Um... And Ms. Hersey, I was just uh, wondering, the Circle of Learning program, what exactly is that, just out of curiosity? That one was the um, Hinton Employment Learning Center, I believe. And it was the thought to pair seniors with younger students in order to provide them both with the opportunity to learn and teach about technology. So. Uh I think actually that's, yeah, that one, I, I was wondering about the Hinton Friendship Center. Oh, sorry. The Hinton yeah. Friendship Center was a program regarding providing kind of one-on-one -on -one tutoring and a group environment for Aboriginal parents to help their children in school. And it seems like it's even more important now because of the online learning, whereas a lot of Aboriginal students, their parents may not have um, as much access to the online segment of things. And not only that, it sounded like working with um, the schools and the environments to just make sure these kids are getting the support they need to continue on in school. Okay, thank you. And, and Mr. Chair, I have another question, but if there's somebody in queue, go ahead. I do have, I have Councillor Nelson in queue and then we'll come back to you. Councillor Nelson? You. Thanks. And uh, if this needs to be deferred to our action item uh, for administration, that's fine. I'm just curious if there's a contingency plan for the curling championships if they don't move forward this year. 
From what we heard from Dwayne Wright, the president there, he said they were planning to move ahead as long as they're able to. I don't think we discussed a contingency, but he, they, I'm sure they have one. Perfect. I'll probably have some follow-up questions for administration during the action item. Appreciate that. Thanks, Ms. Hersey. Thanks, Councillor Nelson. Uh, back to Councillor Haas. Actually, Councillor Nelson took the words out of my mouth. I had the same question, so it'll be interesting to have that conversation. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Council, any other questions or concerns for Ms. Hersey? Very well. Oh, uh, Councillor Haas. No, I, no concerns. I just want to thank uh, Ms. Hersey and the group. Uh, I realize this is not an easy uh, you know, decisions when you're brought to the table and discuss it. There's lots of good programs out there. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure it's too bad that we couldn't uh, fund all the different programs and everything. But again, thank you for, uh, you know, uh, the hard work you've done. And also to the Youth uh, Advisory Committee member as well, joining the group. Uh, it was, I, I imagine, a great opportunity to have uh, the look from the youth and, and you know, versus the rest of the group. And it was probably good discussion. So thank you again from the group. My pleasure. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Uh, and uh, well, Ms. Hersey, seeing no other questions or comments from administration, we'd just like to, again, as Councillor Haas had mentioned, you know, thank you so much for the time and effort that yourself and other members of the group put into making these tough decisions and ultimately uh, working for the betterment of our community. So thank you. You're very welcome. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. All right. Uh, Councillors administration, we are moving on uh, to the next part of our agenda, which is a public hearing, at which point I as the chair will be relinquishing the chair position uh, to our next deputy mayor, which is uh, Councillor Ostashik. Uh, so Councillor Ostashik, if you wouldn't mind, please. Thank you, Councillor McGuire. Um, is my audio okay? Good, all right. I'd like to call to order the public hearing on bylaw number 1088-15. The following public hearing is held pursuant to section 692 of the Municipal Government Act, being chapter M26 RSA 2000 and amendments thereto. The following rules of conduct will be followed during this public hearing. Presentation should be brief and to the point. The order of presentation shall be entry of written submissions, those supporting the bylaw, those opposing the bylaw, and any other person deemed to be affected by the bylaw. Council may ask questions of the speakers after each presentation for clarification purposes. There will be no debating the bylaw. However, questions to the councillors or other parties will be accepted through the chair. I hereby declare the public hearing related to the bylaw open. I turn it over to the secretary. Thank you. The purpose of the proposed bylaw number 1088-15 is to amend the land use bylaw as follows. Lot one, block 30, plan 182, 1995, 133 Bhutan Avenue from C, dash NOD urban node commercial district and R dash M2 medium to high density multiple dwelling residential district to DC one dash Bhutan Avenue direct control district. Lot four block 10 plan 182 1997 134 Bhutan Avenue from R dash M2 medium to high density multiple dwelling residential district to C1, Bhutan Avenue Direct Control District, Lot 1, MR, Block 9, Plan 972, 2403, 147 Bhutan Avenue from S uh, COM Community Services District to DC1, Bhutan Avenue Control, Direct Control District. Lot two, block 30, plan 182, 1995, 159 Bhutan Avenue from R M2 to medium, medium to high density, multiple dwelling regional district to DC one, Bhutan Avenue direct control district. Lot three, PUL, 
Block 30, Plan 182, 1995, 152 Market Street from RM2, medium to high density multiple dwelling re residential district, to DC1, Bhutan Avenue, direct control district, Lot 2, Block 10, Plan 182, 2032, 137 Mauer Drive, from RM2, medium to high density multiple dwelling residential district, to DC1, Bhutan Avenue, direct control district, OT 0-51-24-5, 149 Mauer Drive from RM2, medium to high density, multiple dwelling residential district to DC1, Bhutan Avenue, direct control district as shown on schedule A, attachment one, B, edit overview, attachment two. First reading was given to bylaw number 1088-15 on November 3rd, 2020. Notice of this public hearing was advertised in the Hinton Voice newspaper on November 12th, 19th, 2020, and advertised on the Town of Hinton website. That was a tongue twister. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Are there any late written submissions relating to bylaw number 1088-15? No. Uh, oh, there not. Sorry, I was uh, Okay. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in favor of bylaw number 1088-15? No. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition to bylaw number 1088-15? No. Thank you. Is there anyone present who is deemed to be affected by bylaw number 1088-15 and wishes to speak? No. Thank you. Do the councillors have any further questions? Do the councillors require any further information? If not, I hereby declare that the public hearing relating to bylaw number 1088-15 is closed and will accept a motion to adjourn. Second. Councillor Hawes. I'll make that motion to adjourn the public hearing. Thank you, Councillor Hawes. Uh, is that, sorry, is that, uh, is, that, is that a motion that's to be called to question? Okay. Thank you. I uh, call to question the motion to adjourn the public hearing. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Ostashik. Council Administration, thank you. Uh, that brings us to our action items section of the agenda for this evening. Action item number one which is our temporary mandatory mask and face coverings bylaw review. Uh, although there's no specific report uh, presented on this, uh, this is a discussion item. I will begin with administration to see if administration has any comments uh, on the item before moving to council administration. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to update council on, on how this has been received uh, by the community in and related to uh, any enforcement issues or, or um, issues that uh, our CPOs or bylaw have encountered, uh, it's gone fairly smoothly. Uh, there have been questions and clarifying uh, inquiries to bylaw um, regarding the bylaw. Um, however, there's no enforcement issues to date and we're not receiving complaints um, on, on folks not following the bylaw. Um, so it's a, a brief update and uh, administration would be happy to answer any questions uh, through the discussion to the board council. Very good. Thank you, administration, CAO. Uh, council, this is over to us then. Any points of discussion, anything council would like to bring up at this time? Councillor Walk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I just wanted to clarify what the current status is of Hinton right now. How many active cases? A CAO? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's you to Councillor uh, at, at this time, uh, Hinton is seeing 12 active cases. 
um, in our region or our community. Um, however, um, and I was going to mention this during my CAO report later on, um, due to an order, um, provincial order passed on November 27th, all regions and municipalities that enter into enhanced status while that order is in effect will remain as enhanced until at least December 15th. Uh, so that's been confirmed that uh, Hinton has crossed that threshold after uh, November 27th and will remain enhanced until further notice. Very good. Uh, thank you, CAO Olson. Uh, Councillor Waugh, does that address your question, your concern? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Council, uh, any other questions? Uh, Councillor Haas. I guess the question I have for administration, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I mean, it's been two weeks and we're reviewing it. So do we need a motion of council to continue or does it just remain status quo as it is? CAO. Uh, thank you. Uh, to, to answer that question, uh, no motion by council is required. The bylaw is in place and has been enacted as per the terms within the bylaw um, and it will remain uh, enacted at this time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Council, any other questions or comments before we move on to our section, second action item for the evening? Very good. Seeing none, then we will move on to our second action item, uh, beginning on page 49 of the agenda, and that is the 2020 Community Grant Funding. Uh, and I will turn that over to our CAO, Ms. Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as presented by Ms. Hersley earlier in tonight's meeting, the Hinton Grant Funding Advisory Committee has reviewed applications for the 2020 funding allotment. Uh, I won't elaborate too much as uh, her uh, presentation covered a lot. Uh, the recommended action for this item tonight is that the Hinton Grant Funding Advisory Committee recommends that Council Award Community Grant Program 2020 Fall Intake Funding as per the recommendation from the Hinton Grant Funding Advisory Committee for a total of $19,180 is outlined in attachment one. Mr. Fias is uh, present tonight as well to assist in answering any of the council's questions. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Uh, council, uh, we do uh, have a report that's ours to do with as we please at this point. Uh, any questions, comments for administration and or any motions? Councillor Haas. Yeah, I just, uh, uh, with the presentation, um, first the question of if the funds aren't used, and in particular, I'm talking about the hint or the curling, um, if just in case, you know, COVID continues, restrictions continue um, into the new year, uh, how would that work out with those funds then uh, go back in and take a look at, or, or would it just follow in, uh, into the next round with the extra dollars in the kitty? Thank you. Administration? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I will defer to Mr. Fias. This has been discussed uh, with the committee and with the, in regard to the applications received. Thank you, Say Olson, and true to the council. So the current process that we have been following in the past years for the community grant funding is that as soon as the council approves the recommendation or approves the funding, the accounting department works to issue purchase orders to each of those organizations or each of the applications. And those are sent as soon as we can. And because of that, there's always a risk involved in the sense that if the projects that were awarded the funding did not go through with the project that they applied for, they still receive the funding. We cannot make sure according to our current process whether they're actually using those funds for the, the exact program or project they applied the community grant funding for. Although we hold back 20% of the funding, so 80% of the funding is provided up front and 20% is provided when the submit the final financial report, which essentially details what they've done with the entire funding that they received uh, upfront. So I think in terms of uh, like, particularly for the Hinton Carding Club, um, according to our current process, there is no way we can really ensure what happens with the 80% of the funds they're gonna receive if they don't go ahead with hosting the championships next year. Um, yeah, so, 
essentially I wanted to reiterate that there is always that risk of avoiding the funds and those funds not being used for the appropriate project that they applied for, but there's nothing in place right now where we can ensure that. So thank you. And if I may follow up, Mr. Chair? Please. So, yeah, and I understand that. that's, you know, thank you, Mr. Fias. So the other 20% potentially would then remain with us and go back into, into the account uh, for the community grant program for the next round, because of course the financials would show that that didn't happen, correct? That is correct. Um, although we do hold those funds for a while, even though the, the reporting period is normally within one year, we try to hold those for two, three years in case they're late to report back, which often happens. So um, that's been the process so far. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move that the Hinton Grant Funding Advisory Committee recommends that the Council award Community Grant Program 2020 fall intake funding as per the recommendation from the Hinton Grant Funding Advisory Committee for a total of $19,180 as outlined in attachment one. If I could speak to it quickly. I just want to take a minute to thank all the groups that put forward applications to receive funding in this intake. And I want to also extend appreciation to the grant funding committee for uh, all the work to uh, prioritize them and to make re recommendations to council. It's unfortunate that uh, there wasn't enough money available this intake to get full funding to all the applicants. But again, I do appreciate the work that the committee did to, uh, to prioritize those and, and make recommendations to council. So thanks. Thank you very much, Councillor Ostash. Council, we do have a motion on the floor. Are there any questions or discussion or debate on the motion? Very good. Then seeing no discussion or questions, I will call the motion to question. Uh, that being uh, that the Hinton Grant Funding Advisory Committee recommends that Council award Community Grant Program 2020 fall intake funding as per uh, the recommendation. Yeah, no, sorry. We're going to clarify that, please. Yeah, there we go. That seems right. Councillor Ostashik, I'm going to go back to you to make sure that that reflects your original intent. I think it, yeah, it reflects the intent. That's not the wording, though. No, the wording was the recommended action uh, from the package. Perfect. Absolutely. Uh, Councillor Ostashik, well, which do you want to make any changes or let the uh, changes that are now shown on the screen stand? It captures the intent. It's fine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. So council, uh, the motion on the floor that council award the community grant program 2020 fall intake funding as per the recommendation from the Hinton Grant Funding Advisory Committee for a total of $19,180 as outlined in attachment one. All those in favor, please indicate. Any opposed? Seeing none, that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much, Councillor Ostashik. Council, thank you. That does, uh, sorry, before we proceed to any further discussion or questions on that item, very good, seeing none. We will move on to uh, action item number three, the land use bylaw amendment 1088-15, uh, as indicated on page 53 of our agenda. Uh, and this will be presented by uh, our CAO, Ms. Olson. Uh, Ms. Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The amendments presented for second and third reading tonight were the subject of the earlier public hearing. First reading was passed by Council on November 3rd, 2020, and the amendments included will allow for the intent and regulations to achieve the outcomes included in the design charrette uh, for this land and for affordable or attainable housing to be prioritized through the development of this parcel as prioritized by Council. Uh, tonight, Mr. Vanna has uh, stepped in once more to help administration answer any of Council's questions on this item. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, CEO Olson. Uh, council, any discussion, questions, and or motions to be made? 
Councillor Nelson. I'll move that council give second reading of land use bylaw number 1088-15. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Would you care to speak to that? Oh, I'm fine with second reading going ahead. Uh, there's been very little public uh, feedback, either uh, publicly or personally on this matter to this point. So second reading, I'm totally fine with. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Council, any further discussion on the motion on the floor? Any further discussion? Seeing none, then I will call this to question. The council gives second reading of land use bylaw number 1088-15. All those in favor? And any opposed? Seeing none, that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much, council. Uh, council, we have achieved second reading. Again, we're open to any questions and or motions from the floor. Councillor Nelson. I actually did have a question. Is there any um, timeline that would make it prudent to pass third reading uh, at this time? Administration. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as far as I'm aware of, there's no um, impact that uh, has been presented to my knowledge in passing third reading tonight. Um, Mr. Vanna, if I could defer to you, if there's anything you would want to add. Mr. Vanna, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, but the only thing that um, it's a matter of length of time before you give third reading. And so just so council is aware that, that bylaws do uh, only last for two years before you have to give them that, that third reading. But that's really about the only limitation that council has. Councilor Nelson. Yeah, if I could vote, I, I actually personally, if somebody made that motion, I, I wouldn't support it. It's been a, a really busy time for our council and our community. And um, I'm actually more concerned that I've heard nothing than if I had heard some things, um, you know, with mask bylaws being passed, budget coming down, and everybody personally going through um, very, very many challenges right now. I'd, I'd rather see this be out there for a little while longer. Even if we get no more feedback in the next month, I, I still... I would just feel more comfortable making sure that uh, we gave the public every opportunity to focus on this and, and bring any concerns forward. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Ostashik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess my question is similar to Councillor Nelson's, but uh, kind of the opposite. Is there any risk to delaying third reading? Uh, and if it is delayed, when would it potentially be delayed to? And then I may have a follow-up, Mr. Chair, depending on what the response is. Thank you. Please. Mr. Van. I was going to defer to uh, the CAO for uh, for that because really there there's no risk in, in delaying it for a month or so if, if council wanted to do that. But it, uh, it, it is up to, up to the CAO. Uh, thank you. And, and I was... I'm honestly going to say uh, something similar. There, there is no risk in there's uh, in delaying this um, to the next regular council meeting uh, for follow up. If council is uh, more comfortable moving in that direction, um, so I, I would concur. If I could follow up, Mr. Chair. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah. With that said, then I too would uh, would uh, be in favor of delaying third reading to a future date. I also haven't heard anything on this matter, and I'm not sure that it's because people are disinterested. It's there's a lot going on right now, so I'd like to give people an opportunity to provide some feedback if they choose to. So delaying a month or so to have third reading would be would would be my uh, my choice. So if somebody did make the motion, I likely wouldn't support it either. Thank you. Very good. Then I'll uh, I'll bring myself forward as a question for the CAO. Uh, CAO, as uh, we're part of the agenda setting team for uh, this round, uh, would it be administration's intention then to add that to an agenda within, say, the next month to give the community time to assimilate that information? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, absolutely, we'd be looking at the first regular meeting in January, which is January fifth. Um, I. Unless 
there is a, a direction to postpone it further uh, or discussion to the agenda prep committee uh, that warrants postponing it further. Um, hoping that that gives enough time for the community to um, to respond, I suppose, if they have any concerns or anything further moving forward. Uh, but yes, the intention would be to bring it January 5th. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Council, so we've heard from administration that their intention would be to bring it back to the uh, first regular meeting of January. Um, again, that's an option at this point. The floor is open. Uh, but if we don't see any motions on the floor, uh, my intent as the chair would be to move on to our next action item. Uh, any discussion, any motions from Council? Uh, Council? All right. Very good, Council. So then uh, seeing uh, no, no desire for motions on the floor, uh, we will move on to our next action item. Thank you, administration, for your input. Thank you for your patience on that. And we look forward to seeing that in the new year. Uh, that does bring us to uh, action item number four on page 79 of our agenda package, uh, land use bylaw amendment number 1088-16. Uh, and we'll turn that over to our CAO, Ms. Olson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. At the November 17th, 2020 Standing Committee meeting, Council received a report outlining amendments to the LUB that surfaced through application and use of the bylaw. The amendments proposed continue to support and clarify the use and interpretation of the LUB by the public and administration in response to areas requiring improvement. The recommended action for this item tonight is that Council give land use bylaw 1088-16 first reading and that Council schedule a public hearing on January 5th, 2021 at 4 p.m. in Council Chambers and online to hear public comments on bylaw 1088-16. Um, if Council has any uh, questions, administration is happy to answer. Very good. Thank you, administration. Uh, Council, this is over to us. Any questions for administration and or motions? Councillor, no. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just curious, I don't believe we've come across this in, in my time as a councillor yet. How does this um, relate with the previous action item? And is is there any contingency on one versus the other? I'm just really just, you know, as, as the public's out there, we've got multiple land use bylaw amendments coming forward, just how they relate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, CA Olson. Um, I, I think I'll defer to you, Mr. Vanna for, for this one. Thank you. Mr. Vanna? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through to uh, Councillor Nelson. Uh, this particular um, amendment does clean up a number of things that are uh, causing some concerns in the land use bylaw. So uh, I, there is no, I mean, there's no risk in Council giving first reading to this. Uh, the, the public hearing won't occur until the new year uh, on this item. And so it gives us lots of time to, uh, to advertise it and to get it out in, in front of the public. But it, uh, it, it should go ahead because it, it is causing some, some difficulties in some areas. Very good. Uh, CAO? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sorry, I, th I think the, the question was whether uh, this round of changes is, uh, uh, has any impact on the previous LEP. Um, uh, amendments that came forward through the public hearing, and um, at, I, I don't believe that there's one that's contingent on the other, that they're not coming in sequence or sequential order uh, for any uh, particular reason. Uh, they are separated, and we'll see this from time to time with LUB amendments in that um, putting them all together in one round of amendments when they're quite different in nature and in intention, uh, it's best to separate them out and have uh, separate processes for each. So hopefully that answers your question as well. That, that's perfect. I just want to make sure there was intention behind it and, and that it's legislatively appropriate and that it uh, adds clarity versus confusion is great. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move the council give land use by law number 1088-16, first reading. Very good. Uh, would you care to speak to that, Councillor? Um, well, just quickly, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if there's any public feedback regarding the uh, the proposed amendments to the land use bylaw. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it getting cleaned up and, and uh, a little bit of housekeeping done up to make it a little bit easier to understand and implement. So, thank you. 
Thank you, Councilor Ostashik. Council, we do have a motion on the floor. Is there any questions or discussion debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I will call it to question that Council give land use bylaw number 1080-16, first reading. All those in favor, please indicate. And any opposed? Seeing none, that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much, Council. Uh, Councillor Waugh. Hey, yes, I'd like to move that Council schedule a public hearing on January 5th, 2021 at 4 p.m. in the Council Chambers and online to hear public comments on bylaw number 1088-16. Councillor Waugh, would you care to speak at all on that? Nothing really much to speak to. It's just a matter of process for for something of this nature. So look forward to seeing what uh, public feedback we may or may not get. Thank you, Councillor Waugh. Council, uh, there is a motion on the floor. Councillor Nelson. For citizens that either aren't able to come to council chambers or if council chambers are close to the public, um, what is the deadline for people to um, basically get in the queue to speak at the public hearing? Understanding this is kind of, the, you know, today's was last minute that it was made not uh, publicly available. So I just want to make sure there's clarity to the public of when they can register for no better sense of the words. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question, Councillor. Uh, CAO? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so included in the advertisements is the, the steps to get in the queue to come forward during the public hearing. And I, I believe that it's Monday at noon prior to the council meeting uh, for people to come forward and, and uh, request audience with council through that public hearing process. Um, so that information and who to contact, uh, I believe it's Ms. Anderson, um, is uh, included in the advertisement, as well as if uh, members of the public are unable to attend at all, uh, for, for whatever reason, they may submit written um, information uh, for or against um, that bylaw amendment. Councillor Nelson, is that you're good? Perfect. Council, any further discussion, uh, questions or debate? Very good, seeing none then, I will call to question that council schedule a public hearing on January 5th, 2021 at 4 p.m. in the council chambers and online to hear public comments on bylaw number 1088-16. All those in favor, please indicate. Any opposed? Seeing none, and that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much, council. Thank you, administration. Uh, any further discussion on that action item? Very good. Seeing none, then we will move on to our next action item, which is action item number five, which is on page 190 uh, of our agenda package. And that is the appointment of the returning officer and deputy returning officer for the 2021 elections. And I will turn this over to our CAO, Ms. Olson. CAO. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The roles of returning officer and deputy returning officer must be appointed prior to the nomination period for this election, this next election beginning January 1st, 2021. Included in the report for this item, um, as well as an overview of the changes that were passed through Bill 29, the Local Authorities Election Amendment Act. Mr. Fayez and Ms. Randall have been brought up to speed on what these changes entail and are also present tonight uh, to support any uh, council's questions. The decision requested is to appoint Emily Olson, CAO, as returning officer, and Sandra Randall, Legislative Services Coordinator, as deputy returning officer for the town of Hinton. For the purpose of conducting the 2021 municipal election under the Local Authorities Election Act. Uh, if Council has any questions on this, we're happy to receive them. Perfect. Thank you very much, CAO. Council, uh, any questions and or motions from the floor? Councillor Nelson. Yeah, I, I did have a question. Understanding that um, we've got a million things going on and as CAO, uh, you're you're at the top of those millions. Um, and, and looking, I've only had experience of one election, but it wasn't the CAO that was the returning officer at that time. Would it, uh, is there any reason why we wouldn't flip it to having uh, Ms. Rendell as the primary and, your, and CAO Olson as the backup for this one? 
C.A. Olson. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I don't suppose that there is any reason in to flip it that I'm aware of or not to, to flip that as I'm aware of. Um, I also wanted to be involved as, um, as a new CAO to understand um, just exactly what goes into uh, planning and, and managing the election. So having um, a role within this election was important um, as a learning opportunity. I've been involved on the communication side in the past few elections, but uh, this is kind of a different uh, um, job altogether. Um, if there is concern with council, we can um, discuss it a little bit further. As far as I know, there's no reason not to. Um, I, I don't know, Ms. Randall, um, if that is something, or Mr. Fias, if that is something that you're aware of. Any other comments from administration? Ms. Randall? No? <laughs> Councillor Nelson, uh, any feedback or follow-ups? I think I'll, I'll leave it open to the floor, but uh, if it, you know, if council doesn't have any other questions, I I would happily make the motion to flip it. I want to make sure our CAO is able to to step away and and take on other matters as as they emerge, um, and then step in as a backup and understanding. Then then she can kind of pick and choose uh, her level of involvement a little bit more. Um, who knows what the next eight months are going to look like? How many nominations are going to come through? This is our first time with the ten month long or eleven month long nomination period, and it, I'm guessing it'll probably receive very few nominations early, but uh, we don't really know. So thank you. Councillor Haas. Yeah, I guess before uh, to get a little information on this, but um, would it not be then the discretion of the, the CEO if unable to uh, take a, a more leadership role or whatever, or pass on some of those duties, you could make that call at the time. Uh, is that not possible? CA Olson? Um, yeah, it, I mean, it is possible for um, for me as returning officer to lean on Sandra's deputy, um, should I require that. Um, and, and just to clarify, I, I believe the last two previous elections, it was structured in, in much the same way with the CAO as returning officer and the uh, legislative services um, as the deputy. I, I, I think, I don't know, uh, Mr. Uh, Baez, if you have that information, but um, I, yeah, I, I suppose just to, to um, add a little bit further, um, I'm, I'm not um, opposed to a change. I, I, I have conviction on either side. Uh, we did it that way. That is what I was aware of being the process previous and, and also wanting that opportunity to be involved at that level um, for the election for 2021. Before I go to Councillor Ostashik, uh, Mr. Fayez, it looks like you wanted to speak to that. Please do. Thank you, Chair, uh, true to the Council. So just maybe speaking to the previous question a little bit more, what uh, we found in our research is in most other municipalities, it is the CEO who takes the returning officer position. So that was the reasoning behind, one of the reasonings behind uh, why our CEO was also um, uh, sort of designated to be the returning officer in the report. And then uh, speaking to the second question, um, last, last election cycle in 2017, I, as far as I remember, it was the director of the corporate services, uh, Ms. Dennis Brandt, who was the returning officer. Um, this year, before writing this report, I spoke with the CAO, and as she already mentioned, she had interest in um, being part of this project. And so I think that's how we decided that uh, the CAO would be the returning officer. And, the legislative services coordinator, the deputy returning officer, although I think uh, there is no legislative problems or anything about flipping that. There is no requirements that it has to be the CAO. So yeah, it's up to the council. Very good, thank you. I will go to Councillor Ostashik and then Councillor Haas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move that council appoint Emily Olson, the chief administrative officer as the returning officer and Sandra Rendell, the legislative services coordinator as the deputy returning officer for the town of Hinton for the purpose of conducting 2021 municipal elections under the Local Authorities Election Act. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. Uh, Councillor Ostashik, would you care to speak to that? Uh, I would, yes. Uh, I accept 
understand and agree with the reasons that CA Olson gave for uh, being willing to take on the role of, uh, of the uh, returning officer. And it's also my understanding and appreciation to administration for confirming that uh, any of the duties that, that are required of the position can be delegated to the, to the deputy returning officer. So I, in my opinion, if, if CAO Olson's okay with it and thinks that it's a, it's a manageable burden that I'm good with it too. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostashik. Councillor Haas. Yeah, and I'd like to speak in favor of this. Uh, I do too uh, appreciate the feedback in regards to how the town has done it in the past, plus the other uh, municipalities as well. And I'm confident that uh, CEO Olson with uh, uh, Ms. Randall can, you know, f do the bang up job as, uh, as they, for the election. So I'm totally in favor of her being in that position. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hawes. Council, any further questions on this? I will just speak briefly on this. I also was concerned initially uh, that it seemed to be a departure with how things had been done in the municipality before. Uh, that being said, hearing from administration that this tends to be the best practice in other municipalities, I'm willing to give it a try, although I do, I do just want to state outwardly uh, that my expectations as a councillor is that we're ensuring that our CAO uh, isn't isn't too divided in terms of their time with what will undoubtedly be uh, a very, very busy year uh, moving forward into the next election. Uh, so Ms. Olson, again, I'm just going to turn to you one one last time. You're you are confident in the ability to to delegate the duties downward, as it were, as we move forward uh, from your position, if it's necessary, in order to focus your attention on other areas. Is, is that what I'm hearing from you? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, this, this is one of the most important functions of the municipality is uh, managing the elections of our, our representatives from our community. And it's something uh, that I'm looking forward to having some experience with. And, and, and that goes on, on either side. So if there are duties that require uh, downloading or support, um, I, Ms. Randall is, is part of the team and there are others that can support me in achieve, making sure that the uh, obligations of this uh, position are, are achieved uh, throughout the year. Thank you very much, Ms. Olson. Uh, then for myself, I'm, I'm happy to support this moving forward uh, with the understanding that this really does boil down to one of those how questions where administration's taking the reins and how they manage the organization. And I'm happy to do that provided, of course, that doesn't detract from the promotion of council's policy moving forward and strategic planning. So thank you. Uh, council, any other discussion or questions, comments, or debate on the motion on the floor? Then seeing none, I will call this to question that council appoint Emily Olson, the chief administrative officer as the returning officer and Sandra Rendell, the legislative services coordinator as the deputy returning officer for the town of Hinton for the purpose of conducting 2021 municipal elections under the Local Authorities Election Act, the LAEA. All those in favor, please indicate. All those opposed, and that is one opposed, Councillor Nelson, four in favor, pardon me, five in favor. And I will just confirm with Ms. Anderson that we were good there, Ms. Anderson. Yes, we're great, thank you. Perfect, thank you. Council, thank you for that. Uh, Council, is there any other discussion uh, or questions that we have on that action item? No? Very good, then we will move on to uh, action item number six, the appointments to the Yellowhead Regional Library Board on page 197 of our agenda this evening presented by Ms. Olson, our CAO. Ms. Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Hinton Municipal Library Board makes recommendations to Council on the appointments to the Yellowhead Regional Library Board. This typically includes the Chair of the Local Library Board as member to the Regional Library Board with Vice Chair serving as alternate. The recommended action supports this practice with uh, appointments um, recommended to Hendrick Smith as member and Amanda Gaworski as alternate. Um, if council has any questions, administration is happy to, to answer. Very good. Uh, thank you, Ms. Olson. Council, it's ours to do with as we please. 
Uh, any discussion, comments, or motions to be made? Councillor Nelson. I'd like to move that Hendrick Smith be appointed as member of the Yellowhead Regional Library Board for a one-year term to the 2021 Organizational Meeting of Council and that Aunt Amanda Jaworski be appointed as alternate to the Yellowhead Regional Library Board for a one-year term to the 2021 Organizational Meeting of Council. Uh, I'll speak briefly to it. I've, I've heard from a lot of people outside of um, Mr. Smith himself that uh, he's quite an active uh, member and is chaired and, and does an exceptional job of it. Uh, and anytime I get that uh, kind of reporting from people outside of that group, I, I take that quite seriously and appreciate the work that they've they've done and continue to do. Thank you. Oh, thank Here. you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Haas. Yeah, I'd like to also speak to this. I mean, uh, as part of the board as well, uh, Mr. Smith is, uh, you know, I uh, highly recommend him. He's uh, very passionate about libraries. He's been in that role for a very long time now, uh, a lot of experience. And uh, to have Amanda as well in her experience in education and everything else that she brings to the table uh, will no doubtly bring uh, a great asset as well. So I speak highly in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you very much, councillors. I'll just take a moment to speak to this too. I, I appreciate the work uh, done by both of these fine individuals. Uh, this is just one of those easy, easy to make motions, easy to support motions, where you've got two hardworking people who really believe in what they do. Uh, and we as a community are quite frankly, lucky to have them in those positions. Uh, so I'm, you know, very happy to move forward supporting this. Council, uh, any further discussion? Very well, seeing none. Uh, we do have a motion on the floor and I'll call it to question that Hank Smith, pardon me, that Hendrick Smith be appointed as member to the Yellowhead Regional Library Board for a one-year term to the 2021 Organizational Meeting of Council and that Amanda Jaworski be appointed as alternate to the Yellowhead Regional Library Board for a one-year term to the 2021 Organizational Meeting of Council. Council, all those in favor, please indicate. And any opposed? Seeing none. That is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Council, is there any further discussion on that action item before we move on? Seeing none, then we will move on. Uh, that brings us to action item number seven, the nomination deposit requirement bylaw on page 200 of our agenda package. And this will be presented by our CAO, Ms. Olson. Ms. Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At the November 17th standing committee meeting, council provided direction to administration to bring back an election bylaw that reflected best practices, including nomination deposit amounts, as municipalities may require a deposit for every nomination during the election nomination period. Upon confirmation from municipal affairs on Hinton's population, based on the most recent census, those municipalities under 10,000 in population, um, it requires that that deposit cannot exceed $100. Based on the discussion at the November 17th standing committee meeting, the attached bylaw includes a nomination deposit amount set to that maximum of $100. Additional areas that council could have considered uh, included, or included increasing the number of signatures required for nomination. However, due to that uh, population uh, component to the number of signatures for a municipality of fewer, fewer than 10,000 people cannot exceed the five, which is where it is set at this point. As well, for a municipality of less than 10,000 people, no additional nomination paper drop-off locations can be considered. So uh, this population confirmation is, is important to note, um, as in different areas within uh, the province of Alberta's website, our population is represented differently. case. So uh, we took uh, extra step to speak to municipal affairs um, and to uh, determine what their sense of our population is, what, they're, what they base it on so that we could be sure to, to get this correct. So um, that's why um, we're including this information here. Um, the bylaw requires all three readings prior to January 1st, 2021, if there is to be a change um, outside of the, the status quo, uh, which is when nomination period commences. Should council not proceed with all three readings tonight, the bylaw will not be valid for approval due to that time frame. The recommended action for the nomination deposit requirement bylaw is to proceed with all three readings tonight. Uh, administration is happy to receive any of the council's questions. Thank you. Thank you, administration. Uh, council, uh, at this point, it is ours uh, for any questions or concerns. Uh, council, any questions? Councillor Nelson. 
Just for clarification, if we do nothing with this agenda item, does that then default the uh, that it would be free and there'd be no uh, deposit? Administration. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and to Councilor Nelson. Uh, that that is correct. It would default to status quo, which is uh, uh, no deposit required. Perfect. Yeah, if I could speak to it, I. This is another one of those things that is it worth the hundred dollars to pass a bylaw and have one more barrier for entry for uh, people thinking about running? And uh, I wish there's a way to get more signatures because uh, you know that's that's effort, not uh, not finances. But to me, I, I don't have any interest in creating any barrier, especially in a year like this. Um, there may be people running on uh, really really tight budgets. You know, looking at stretching every dollar to make a few signs, and and I, I think it's important that that we uh, allow anybody that wants to take part and can get their nominations in. I, I think we need to let them run. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Uh, Councillor Waugh, and then I have myself. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, and uh, the discussion we had a couple of weeks ago was an interesting one and uh, brought up some scenarios that I hadn't thought of before. But I think this is a situation where I don't want to overthink it. Uh, I would rather keep status quo for now and then it could be up to the next group to adapt the bylaw, uh, depending on what we see in the next election. Uh, but for now, for a number of the reasons that Councillor Nelson mentioned, uh, I, I I think I'd be more comfortable without having uh, without having a deposit at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wyeth, myself, then Councillor Haas. Uh, yeah, I certainly agree with both of my colleagues who've spoken before me. I think. It is important that, as Councilor Nelson said, we reduce barriers in the upcoming election. Um, you know, this this is certainly an economic struggle for a lot of people, and we want to ensure that we're trying to encourage as many people to participate as possible. That being said, I know there were some concerns that were raised around what the the extra long nomination period may do, or what it might open up in terms of opportunities to make the, the system more complex. Uh, and I do, I think the following election is probably a more appropriate time to examine what the impacts uh, of this, this extra long nomination period are, and then to make a more fact-based decision rather than trying to second guess it. Uh, Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And yeah, I too, I didn't wanna put any barriers in between you know, uh, running for council. Um, I just wanna clarify a question in regards to that real quick. Um, about some of that, the, the conversation we had about last meeting, and that's in regards to um, when it comes to naming the nominated candidates, and this is to uh, our administration, uh, I understand that, that those aren't released until 48 hours uh, following the close of nominations. Is that correct? Ms. Olson? Hi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Randall, can you provide clarification? Ms. Randall? Sorry, having trouble unmuting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, that is correct that uh, candidate um, not that are nominated, they we do not disclose that until 24 hours after the close of nomination period. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, I know there was some, and but unless a, a candidate were to let them know or let the community know, really nobody knows who's nominated, who's not until that time, correct? So, right. I mean, yeah. So, I, I yeah, I'm totally for the hundred dollars or no hundred dollars or no fee whatsoever, and uh, to go with status quo. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Council, Councillor Ostashek. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I concur with a lot, a lot of the things that have been said by the other councillors today. Um, there were some scenarios brought up when we discussed this at standing about different ways that it could potentially be uh, manipulated, uh, you could say. However, I, you know, I've got uh, pretty good, pretty strong faith that uh, anybody who's considering running will will do it in good faith, and uh, I don't think that there will be any attempt to manipulate the system. If there is, then we'll see it throughout this election cycle and then uh, next council can make decisions to put some further restrictions on it if they, if they see anything like that happening this time around. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostashek. Council, um, we don't have any motions on the floor. If it is the will of council to 
simply accept this in for information that is not councillor haas yeah i'd like to make the motion the council give first reading to nomination deposit requirements by law uh so yeah number 1152 sorry just a point of clarification yeah clarification pardon uh, me with no fee so amended i, I guess will we have to Sorry, my apologies. Councillor Haas, if I may, um, and again, you can, this is simply for your own information, is that uh, if if we simply accept the report for information, then we would proceed forward with no changes and the status quo would. Uh, Sorry, would my apologies. Yeah, my apologies. I want to then to uh, disregard that and make the motion to accept for information. Thank you, Councillor Haas. We'll just give that a second to have the changes reflected on the screen. We'll make sure that, that meets with your approval and then we'll yeah. discuss and or call it to question. And my apologies, my screen went <laughs> no doubled and yeah. So yeah, that looks good for me. Perfect. Council, is there any discussion or debate on the motion on the floor? Very good. Seeing none, then I will call this to question the council accept. The nomination deposit requirement bylaw number 1152 as information. All those in favor, please indicate. All those opposed, seeing none, that is carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Administration. Is there any further discussion on that action item? Councillor Waugh. Yeah, just quickly, I wanted to thank administration for their work on it. Uh, I, that did reflect uh, the wishes of council at the time, but with uh, a couple of weeks to reflect, uh, I, I think we all just uh, decided uh, better to, to not have a nomination fee or deposit. So I, I just wanted to point that out. So thanks for the work. It just, uh, it wasn't a reflection of uh, the work you did, more of a reflection of the time we had to think about it. Thank you. Absolutely, and thank you for uh, putting that quite well, Councillor Waugh. Council, any further discussion on that action item before we move forward? Seeing none, then we will move forward to action item number eight, the debenture borrowing bylaw number 1150, the purchase of the new fire truck. That is found on page 204 uh, of your agenda package, and I will turn that over to Ms. Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This item is before council tonight as the purchase of the new fire truck was approved in the 2020 capital budget. However, that purchase was deferred uh, due to uh, COVID impacts and uh, prioritization of cash flow over uh, several months of this year. In order to complete the purchase of this fire truck, a borrowing bylaw must be approved by council. The purchase process was initiated, but due to competing priorities and time constraints, uh, this was the first opportunity that we had to get it in front of council. Should council give this bylaw first reading tonight, the bylaw will be advertised for two weeks in the paper and as well as a 15 day petition period uh, prior to being brought forward for consideration for second and third reading by council. The recommended action uh, for this item tonight is that council gives first reading of the authorization of debenture bylaw 1150 is presented. Uh, Ms. Fox is here as well as uh, Chief Martins to assist in answering any of council's questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Olson. And just uh, before we begin, uh, from the agenda side of things, from the agenda prep committee side of things, um, if so that council's aware, is that if this recommend action, of course, moves forward as the will of council, then the expectation is that in two weeks' time, we'll see a special meeting of council to deal with the subsequent readings of the, uh, the bylaw. Is that correct? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and apologies for the confusion. Um, that this would come at the January 5th meeting for uh, second and third reading. Um, the 15 day petition period happens after the um, advertising period. So mm. that, uh, apologies for the confusion in that way. Oh, no, that clarifies it. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, council, any questions or discussion or motions? Councillor Haas. I'd like to move that council give first reading of authorization of debenture bylaw number 1150 as presented. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Hawes. Would you like to speak to that? Yeah, real quickly. I mean, this is obviously a piece of equipment that we need. 
uh, and uh, to start the process as quickly as possible. This is the, the first part of it. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Council, any discussion, questions or debate? Seeing none, then I will call that to question. The council gives first reading of authorization of debenture bylaw number 1150 as presented. All those in favor? And any opposed? Seeing none. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you, council. Thank you, administration. And council, any further discussion, questions on that action item? No? There we go. Then we are at the end of our action items and we will move on to information items. Uh, looking at the financial statements and capital status updates, as well as the council information packages. Council, that is up to us. Looking for any motions. Councillor Nelson. If we had questions regarding the um, capital budget, is, is this where we're supposed to be asking out or is that for a different time? Uh, administration, would you prefer that now or during council reporting? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. If, um, if the questions are related to the capital that was included uh, with this report as per uh, council's request, um, this is, uh, administration is happy to receive those now. Councillor Nelson, any questions? Yeah, I have a couple. Uh, I'll start with one. So page 217 of 225. So about, I don't know, 40% of the way down, there's the overlay on Greg Avenue. And my question is, it's showing physical progress is 100% complete, but there's been no expenditure uh, yet. Just any feedback on that would be great. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Chair, through to Council. Yeah, with the uh, percentage of completion, uh, Typically we go on the completion is being calculated uh, for what we've paid at the time. So sometimes at the, that point in time, the, they've actually completed the project, but because the invoice billing hasn't taken place, it's not showing complete as part uh, percent of financial completion. So uh, I imagine this is a report back from uh, September, uh, the, status report as of to date would would show an actual number in there perfect that there's a few of those uh like that so i'll assume that's the case for all of those so uh, i'll step out of the queue for now thank you councillor nelson uh council any further questions uh councillor nelson so i'm kind of reading what i'm doing so i don't have any idea if anybody else is in the queue there um, just below that, uh, the CN Drennan Road Crossing Rehab, it shows its cost share, um, but there's no actual uh, dollar budget for it. I was just curious uh, what that uh, number would be. Ms. Fox? Uh, this comes from a document uh, that's a larger capital plan. Uh, and when it's presented to council, we try and remove the things that had no budget or budget might be there for um, current or previous years. Uh, so sometimes those line items don't get uh, removed and this is just one of those items. So if, if I could know. call it, so we're, we're not expecting any expenditures for that project? Ms. Fox? Yeah, if you uh, give me a few minutes, I'll just check the overall capital plan so I'm not speaking uh, with incorrect information. Councillor Nelson, so we'll wait on that uh, and we'll get that information to you in a moment. Uh, Council, while we're waiting on that, Councillor Haas. Yeah, I, I don't have a, a question about the blood, capital budget. I do have a question about pack in, pa from package number one, uh, but if we're not on that yet, um, we can wait until that. What we'll do is, Miss Fox, uh, would you like several minutes? We could call a break if you're researching some information. Had to find my unmute button. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to need a few minutes just to research what uh, the numbers are. Uh, Councillor Haas, was there another financial question that you wanted to give Miss Fox the heads up on 
And then no, I no, I have no financial questions, just on the package. No. Okay, very good. Yeah. Uh, then Miss Fox, would five minutes suffice uh, to do the research necessary? I'm working with three computer screens and you think I could get the mouse to go to the unmute button. Sorry about that. Uh, as far as I can tell uh, in the 2020 budget, there is, no, I'm gonna need a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. So we will call a five minute break. It's 5.22 on my clock. We'll reconvene at 5.27. Uh, so feel free, we can uh, turn off our mics and Council, we will call the meeting back to order at 5.28 p.m. Uh, and back to administration. Ms. Fox. Thank you. So to answer your question, there is no money for 2020 being spent on CN Drennan Road. Councilor Nelson. Perfect, thank you. Perfect. Council, any further questions uh, or we are looking for a motion to accept Councillor Nelson. Just also looking for some clarification on the street sign upgrades and kind of what the total amount is and potentially um, those are 70% complete without any expenditures and some is carryover. So any clarification for the public on the total cost of that project would be helpful. Thank you. Ms. Fox. Thank you. Just uh, noting that this information is now a few months old and there, there would be updates on a, a more updated status report. I know that in the carry forwards being brought forward during budget deliberations, they're only requesting 40,000 of the 240. So the 100 and the 140, they're only requesting 40,000 of that be carried forward, uh, which would seem to me that they intend on spending the, the remaining 200,000. Um, but if you want further information on that, I would have to uh, talk to the infrastructure services department and bring you further information back. Yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, these notes were made prior to budget. And I know some of the questions around this were asked at budget as well. So I, I look forward to it at that time. Is there anybody else in the queue, Mr. Chair? No, not at this time, uh, Councillor Nelson. I did have a question on 219 of 225 as well. So under public works equipment upgrades, there's uh, equipment replacement unplanned, uh, which we spent 49 of 120 that was budgeted, but it says planning for 2020 completion. So are we expecting to uh, expend the rest and uh, I guess just kind of what that's in reference to. Administration. Ms. Fox. Uh, thank you, Chair, through the Council, and uh, just appreciate your patience. Uh, it takes me a few minutes to flip screens to get information, knowing that this is old, it's not fresh in mind, and also, uh, I'm the one who puts the numbers in and tries to add them together, but don't necessarily uh, know a lot about the projects themselves. I'll do my best to give you the information um, that I can. The unplanned equipment replacement uh, has $49,000 spent in it. Uh, typically what happens in that status update is they inform you uh, the, the director will inform you what projects have been spent in there. I know that was in there at one point and we switched the format and I, I may have inadvertently deleted that cell. So what I'll do is try and make sure uh, that I can identify what exactly has been charged there because I'm looking now and I see it, it, it looks to be overwritten. And uh, I know they provide a detail as what was expended in there. And that is typically what you would see in the status here. So I will provide that. And uh, I will also provide that for the public to be aware of as well. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Fox. Councillor Nelson? I, I did have, I think, only two more. Um, Go ahead. On the next page, 220, kind of about halfway down, there's a, a line item that's just details is just 25,000. So I'm just curious what project 
um, that actually is administration. Ms. Fox. Yeah, thank you, um, Chair. Just give me one moment and I will flip over to that screen. It looks like uh, the information just got cut off um, by the narrowing of that cell. So I should be able to have that for you here shortly. That is the Guild Concession Reconfiguration Project. Councillor okay. Nelson? Yeah, no, that's that's perfect. So it just ties in with the, the item below it, I guess. Correct. If nobody else, you, I actually still have two more. I, there's one on the next page. The uh, still on the same page, a uh, few lines down, there's Government Center Tenant Improvement which is a total budget of 140 and it says 40 is required for 2020 and 200 will be deferred until 2021. So is it going to be a hundred extra or a hundred deferred or a hundred deferred and a hundred extra in future budgets? Administration, whenever, whenever you're ready. Yeah, thank you, Chair, through to Council. Um, right now, the Government Center project uh, has no current spending in 2020, and they are requesting to carry forward 100,000 into 2021. Okay, so it's just 100,000, perfect. And then last one. Uh, so on the following page, there's the legal planning contingency of 300,000. And it says 2019 carry forward projects to be complete in 2020. And so just so I understand, under, understanding we're not in camera and it's really limited, we basically have projects that we're expecting there to be some legal contingencies that we need that weren't completed in 2019 and haven't yet been completed in 2020. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Chair, through to Council. So what that uh, is referencing is that a legal... Um, suit started in 2019 that has not yet been settled and is still not settled will carry forward into 2021. Perfect. Thank you. That's, that's all I have for that one, guys. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council, uh, any further questions, Councillor Haas? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just have one question on package number one. Uh, and I guess it's more of a statement more than it is a package or a question, sorry. Um, but it's kind of concerning to me. I'm looking at uh, the ATA quarterly uh, and it's uh, for, and this goes to, I guess, Mr. Martins, if you can comment, but uh, we're looking at July, August and September with a total of hours of 62.3 hours in those three months, but 55.93 of those hours are in one spot, um, it, you know, there, then it's on highway 16 eastbound at near McCardo drive. Now I understand there's no school, uh, during, you know, July and August, obviously, and the school zones maybe, but man, I mean, we've got a lot of spots that, uh, could be, uh, you know, have some enforcement and some, and some, uh, you know, presence at, but the majority of the hours are on that highway spot. And that's really concerning to me. I hear a lot of, you know, uh, residents talking about whether it be Mountain Street, Broad Road, other areas. And I saw that, you know, that they're, they're high risk spots. And I look at these and, and they are considered high risk spots, high risk places. But uh, Mr. Martins, and I, I, I'm assuming that this might be some of the difficulty you were uh, referring to during our budget session, uh, you know, during the 2020 year. Uh, is there any comments on that to, to administration, please? Chief Martins. Thank you, Mr. Chair through to council. Yeah, so uh, there has been some ongoing challenges still um, with the contractor. We also, when we reduced our zones and we reduced our hours, um, 
our contractor also took away a position. Uh, so we used to have two photo radar vehicles in town and now we only currently have one. Um, so there's a little bit of reduction there. Um, however, there still are challenges on, on the areas um, that they're currently shooting in as well as some freelancing that has happened over this year. Um, and then we've had the COVID side of things into this um, school zones reduction. Um, I think we're down to about 26 zones and almost half of those are school zones. So um, there has been a, um, there are a lot of uh, in, interesting um, discussion this year. Um, we are discussing the hours again with uh, that contractor coming up here um, before Christmas. Um, so we might have a little bit more information then, but um, I'll leave it at that. If, if I may, Mr. Chair. Please. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, it's very disappointing to see that, you know, especially uh, at the beginning of the school year, you know, we, we want to um, impress upon the community, you know, you've had two months, the school zones are not enforced necessarily because we don't have high traffic there. But then, you know, the presence of them would have been greatly appreciated, I think, in the beginning of the school year. And I personally, you know, uh, see a lot of speeding happening, uh, especially at the high schools with uh, students that may be driving. And I don't want to point fingers at, but I do see the students uh, speeding through those areas. And there's a lot of pedestrians. So I really hope the contractor starts to, you know, look at those high risk and, and uh, try to uh, reduce the amount of hours at the high, in the highway areas and get into the inner community uh, where there's other high risk areas. So thank you, Mr. Martins, for that work you're doing. I just wanted to make note of that, that I, I do, I don't think this is right by the contractor. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Thank you, Mr. Martins. Uh, any other questions or points on that? Council, Councillor Haas. Yeah, I'd just like to make the motion then uh, that, uh, bear with me a second here, uh, that we accept financial statements and capital stat status updates as of, uh, as of October 31st, 2020 and council information packages number one and number two for December 1st, 2020. Thank you very much. Uh, council, is there any discussion on those? Councillor Nelson. A request to split, please. Very good, we will split those. Council, is there any discussion on the first motion that council accept the January 1st, August 31st 2020 year to date financial statements. Actually, I'm going to wait until that. There we go. Just, uh, Councillor Nelson, I just want to double check with you. You content with the split as it is? Perfect. Council, any discussion or debate on the first point? Councillor Nelson. Uh, I, I won't be speaking in favor yet. There's still a few things that um, I'm, I'm not certain what they are yet on our financial statements and financial reporting is our really our, our one uh, way that we uh, kind of can oversee what's happening in our organization. So I won't support it this time. Not a huge deal. I hope that we uh, get another year to date financial statement at, at some point in the near future is it'll probably answer a lot of those questions. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Council. Any further discussion on that point? Seeing none, then I will call that to question. The council accept the January 1st to August 31st, 2020 year-to-date financial statements and capital project plan update as information. All those in favor, please indicate. All those opposed? Uh, and that was carried four to two with Race and Nelson against. Wendy, was that good? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have a second motion that is still on the floor that needs to be dealt with. And I will uh, wait until I can see it again. And that is uh, Councillor Haas's motion that council accept information packages 
number one and number two for December 1st, 2020. Any discussion on those as information? Councillor Hawes, does that reflect your intention? Thank you. Council, any discussion on that? Seeing none, I'll call that to question. All those in favor? All those opposed? Seeing none, and that is carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Administration. That brings us to the reporting section of tonight's agenda. And we will begin uh, Council, and I will start with Councillor Waugh. Councillor Waugh? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I guess I'll start with SEAC. Uh, the, their fall survey just concluded. Uh, from what I understand, uh, hearing from our chair, Jalen Bertolin, is that the, uh, the number of uh, respondents was equal to last year. So the, the group is going to be busy compiling that data and bringing it to council in the coming weeks, I believe. Uh, CAO Olson, can you confirm that for me as far as uh, scheduled date uh, see SEAC back before council. Is it December December 8th or 15th? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through to Councillor Wa. Um, I, I don't have that information. It isn't uh, appearing on our um, council meeting agendas at this point. Okay. Um, I can look into that though and provide that information to council. Yeah, the plan is to bring it soon. So I, I just didn't know if it had been discussed at agenda or not yet. Uh, and with regards to community futures, uh, we have a, a meeting coming up this week, just uh, quick to discuss uh, the regional relief fund and how that's going to be uh, rolled out for round two through community futures. Uh, and that's all I have for committee reporting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Waugh. We'll go to Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have too much to report this time around. Uh, no official function since the last uh, regular meeting of council. But I do have a Hinton Regional Economic Development Coalition meeting coming up on Thursday of this week and a Beaver Boardwalk Committee meeting coming up on Monday of next week. So next regular meeting of council, I should have some information to update council with. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ostashek. Councillor Rice. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On uh, November 22nd, I attended an ASH meeting along with Councillor Haas. I apologize, I do not have my notes from that meeting. Um, the path has also indicated that they will be closed for the next three weeks. Also, um, November 26th, I attended a virtual coffee meeting with Grand Yellowhead Public School Division. Excellent meeting. Had to be 30 people attending that, um, that session. Very, very good questions, um, I thought, put to, the, to everybody. Bernie had called in and talked about um, um, coders, and it seems to be the way of the future, and maybe that's something that we as a municipality could look at offering and um and that's it thank you sir thank you councillor race councillor nelson I had a couple things so uh, i was able to attend a auma waste to energy seminar uh waste to energy is something that is uh, in a lot of ways exciting for our community and that we have a landfill that uh is largely untapped uh and and very basic so there's some really neat opportunities moving forward um our wetland uh policy review project is is going full steam ahead, which is uh, kind of underneath the Alberta uh, Water Council, which is a really, really neat project to be involved with. Uh, and building off of Council Wa with Community Futures West Yellowhead, our strat plan uh, is usually a full day and, and something that's uh, usually one of the best strat planning sessions that I get to be a part of was postponed uh, until the new year, just due to COVID, bringing people together from five different municipalities, uh, just didn't seem like the right idea. And I'm happy we canceled when we did because ultimately once the province came down with their restrictions, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do it anyways. Um, and then I did, if, if I could ask a question at this point too, um, Ms. Shepard referred to uh, 25 days uh, for the budget. And I'm, I don't have anything in my calendar yet for when our next budget meeting is. So I'm just curious if, 
if there's a known uh, date uh, that we could share publicly and get on our calendars for our next uh, budget meeting. CAO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So as mentioned uh, during budget and uh, it's being discussed at the agenda prep committee uh, table to bring budget back for December uh, 15th. Um, the intention there is to have the standing committee meeting first and then move into a special meeting where we can uh, have another look at budget and discuss things further. Perfect. Can I just follow up for one quick second? Yes, please. Is it possible to have that package then at the same time as the standing committee meeting? Understanding I'm, I'm guessing budget would be a special meeting, not a extension of the standing committee meeting? CAO? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Absolutely, that's the intention is to provide um, both agendas at the same time to give um, some time for council to reflect on changes. Awesome, I, I appreciate that, uh, CAO Olson and Mr. Chair. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> one, uh, yeah, I, I did attend. I came just because I hadn't been to an ASH meeting for a while, and it was after the organizational meeting and just uh, wanted to attend and, and say hi again. And uh, it was a really good meeting, lots of good discussion, a lot of discussion around COVID and safety and uh, masks. And uh, they were preparing for... Um, they were having an event with break a leg, but unfortunately, uh, well, they were setting up the, how that was going to work and be safe uh, with COVID measures and restrictions and things. But uh, unfortunately, due to provincial restrictions, that has changed now being enhanced. Uh, so it, it'll be postponed uh, to when I'm not sure. Um, I had a library board meeting uh, since last and, uh, you know, everything's going well at the library. Um, you know, it was right after the mask bylaw and uh, the patrons were, um, you know, in compliance with that, no problem. Um, I wanted to mention one little thing just came up on my, with uh, the Christmas season uh, coming. Uh, the library has a, a gift from Santa to, to be registered for uh, between December 1st and 12th. And you register for little ones zero to six um, and a gift from Santa uh, will be given and they can be picked up um, Tuesday, December 15th from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. So to get your registrations in early while you have, uh, while the quantities last. Um, I also wanted to uh, uh, extend, we did have budget discussions uh, as uh, Ms. Shepard alluded to in her minute with council. And uh, I just wanted to pass on that. I found those uh, that day and four hours, very informative for me, uh, helped to uh, understand a lot of different things. And I'm looking forward to further discussion as well uh, when it comes to December 15th and hearing more from the community as well. And the other thing I wanted to talk real quick about is uh, how I want to thank the community. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, there's been lots of discussion around masks and mask bylaws, but I've uh, been seeing a lot of uh, a lot of compliance in the community for my part. Uh, a lot of people wearing the masks, uh, even some that stated they prefer not to, but realize that, you know, it's important to do so right now. It's not, you know, it's, it's the lesser of uh, their words, the evils uh, that could happen. So I want to thank you for that, um, you know, and to continue that because uh, unfortunately we are seeing the numbers go higher um, and uh, our, the, uh, the healthcare system in, in particular Edmonton is being very uh, stretched right now, uh, both, you know, for, for patients, but also for staff as well. So I want to thank the community members for doing that. So thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all I have. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Haas. Uh, and then for myself, um, I have been in discussion with the mayor uh, about um, council um, groups and committees, simply because uh, with the golf course committee now being removed from my plate, that, that leaves me a little empty handed. Um, now, that being said, uh, one of the things that we've been talking about, and I'd like to advocate for a little bit, um, I wouldn't be looking at requesting any committees that already exist with any other counselors, um, especially because for myself and my work schedule, it's a little bit more complicated. What I do think there is uh, an opportunity for, and I was you know, looking to bring this to council to think about, uh, is really looking to engage some of our citizens with some more grassroots politics. Uh, Councilor Nelson and I, the mayor, we had some discussions around this, just saying, you know, we're, we're locked down currently, but there's still the opportunity to engage with people. 
uh, via you know the web through Zoom technology meeting like that and talk about some of the important subjects on more of an ad hoc basis, almost like a working group, if you will. Uh, that's something I'm happy to take on. I'd like to put a little bit more form around that, um, but I'd like to discuss that with council. I'm not looking to make anything like that a formal committee because I'm not looking for remuneration. What I'm looking to do is to engage with the public, but make that you know an extension of the will of council because I think that's most appropriate uh, in a reporting setting. Because when I come back and I report to council, I want it to be with purpose. So if you could think about that, uh, you know, what some ideas or areas that you'd like to sort of engage the public with, uh, if we could have some discussions around that, that would be appreciated. And then just for transparency's sake, you know, I've been through a number of budgets and I know uh, the less that we have surprises on the table for both council and administration, the better. Uh, and I know we had gone into our discussions and give, uh, pardon me, we had given administration a direction to return a 4% budget to council. Uh, but, you know, this past week alone, I've had a number of conversations in the previous week um, just on our budget situation. And for myself, I'm hearing pretty strongly that, you know, people are hurting right now, uh, to, be, to be very frank. Uh, there's a lot of businesses that are looking at potentially shuttering their doors. I was just talking with some workers of a local business who said they don't know if they're going to be working next week uh, because the slowdowns have impacted them so much that their employer is considering just shuttering things in the hopes that it will get better. Um, I would agree with some of the comments made by Mrs. Shepard earlier this evening is that this is tough. This is a lot tougher than we thought it was a month ago. And I, you know, I don't foresee it getting better anytime soon. So moving forward, uh, I'm going to be looking for, for some more efficiencies and some more savings. Uh, at the very least, a, a zero budget for myself. And I know that's not where everybody else stands, but that's as a result of what I've heard with the community in the last little while. Uh, and again, I don't want that to be a surprise. I want that to be out on the table as early as possible as a result of engaging with the community. Uh, I can only go by what the community directs me to bring forward, and, and that's what I'm hearing very strongly. So I just, again, I want that out there for council to hear so that it's not a surprise. I think that's the most professional way to bring that forward. Uh, and then last but not least, I had a couple of sit down sessions with some community, community members uh, down West River Road. Uh, they had expressed concerns about the state of roads in that area, although they were happy with some of the work that had been done by the town so far. But they thought there were some efficiencies to be gained rather than just sort of spending money on a problem, uh, more so in working with the town on how to solve the problem more efficiently as it dealt with water runoff from driveways, flooding out the road and then freezing and sort of causing havoc during the winter months or just slop during the spring months. And so what I'm hoping is that we I sent an email to administration and council about this. We can see some form of public engagement down there to get the feedback of residents to find out what the most efficient way of doing things is rather than just you know doing what has been done in the past that doesn't necessarily solve the problem in the long term. So. Uh, that's my reports for this evening. Uh, thank you very much. And I will move to our CAO, Ms. Olson. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so just a, a couple quick things uh, for Council and for the public. Um, the Emergency Operations Center, uh, we've remained at a level one activation uh, through uh, the last few months, and that's currently still uh, in place. We're having weekly meetings with our command staff, uh, scheduled for Mondays, at this point, it's mostly roundtable and information sharing um, as we have our, uh, our DEM, our Deputy uh, Director of Emergency Management, um, Liaison Officer, Public Information Officer, um, and, and Scribe as well attending those meetings. So, uh, so that we're sharing what we're hearing and we're making sure that our communications are, are relevant and timely. Um, at this point, there's no operating period objectives, so we're not working on any, anything outside of um, just that roundtable. Um, so um, I mentioned earlier in the meeting that under that order on Friday, all regions are that enter into enhanced status will remain uh, that way until at least December 15th. It's the information that I've received from the province. Um, this also coincides with the next scheduled review of the mass bylaw on the 15th during the standing committee meeting as we're reviewing that bylaw every two weeks. Um, so uh, that um, that is the timing there. Um, I, I appreciated. That, that change as we saw over the week prior to November 27th, popping in and out of enhanced and that made communications and consistency very difficult um, for administration as 
you know, were enhanced in the morning and then public again in the afternoon. Um, so it, it generated a lot of questions and I was happy to see the province support communities like ours um, with something in place that, that creates that consistency uh, for us. Um, one other uh, piece, new, I guess, emerging uh, piece is, uh, is that as we saw earlier in the year uh, through the pandemic, um, peace officers have now been empowered to enforce the recent public health orders as well. So that's something new that's come through this week. Um, so they're able to enforce those uh, public health orders along with the RCMP and Alberta Health Services public health inspectors as well. So just wanted to uh, share that with council and the community as an update. Um, also, uh, last week, I believe, late last week, um, uh, Civic Spend was sent out uh, just recognizing some work that uh, some community agencies had done um, along with FCSS, um, uh, including the Hinton Employment Learning Place, the Hinton Friendship Center, and the Hinton Food Bank on a grant request that supported Hintonites during the pandemic. Um, over the last several months, that those grant monies were used, and, and this is included in that Civic Spend, but I think it's important to touch on a couple of these. Um, the funds were used to distribute over 1,800 food hampers, 320 fresh food vouchers, and 121 care hampers, as well as a few other initiatives, um, checking in on people uh, through supportive calls to, pr to promote their well being and prevent isolation. Some cooking classes were provided to help families um, transition to preparing more food at home, um, and over 650 transit passes were, um, were provided uh, to ensure residents could access that as well. Um, so overall, the measures supported 3,000 local residents, um, and I just wanted to thank uh, those involved, um, those like local agencies and FCSS, um, for supporting that and for, for making that happen. Um, community sure was appreciated. Uh, remaining funds have been donated to the Pin Club of Hinton, um, as decided by the collective, um, those agencies. So just wanted to, to share that with the community as a bit of a good news story in a bad news situation. Um, so appreciate that. That's everything for me. Thank you, CA Olson. We'll move on to administrative inquiries written. Uh, are there any submissions? Nope. None. Very good. Then we will move on to notices of motion. Council, any notices of motion? Seeing none, that takes us to the adjournment of our meeting. Looking for adjournment. Councillor Haas. Make the motion to adjourn our meeting. Very good. Council, any discussion on that? Seeing none, then we will call that to question. All those in favor? All those opposed? Seeing none, and that is carried unanimously, and we are adjourned at 6 p.m. Thank you so much, Administration Council, for your time. We actually got through a fairly weighty agenda uh, in, I think, what was a, a reasonable period. Uh, so we'll go global.